Hello and welcome back YouTube. So uh, I knew I had enough space on Obama Phone 3 to shoot video until the time I had to get on my bus. Um, and I knew that's pretty much all I had space for it. So of course it ran out shortly after I missed my bus. Oh, ain't that some shit. Yeah, definitely need to get more, uh, more, uh, get another micro SD card for that phone so I have more space to shoot video on it. And uh, also need to uh, be more mindful of the damn time. Uh, so I don't miss my buses like that. Oh, I just miss having my car. But hey, I, I do feel like I get better, better video walking around downtown, looking up at all the big ass buildings, including this giant vacant tower formerly occupied by Chase Bank. Right, that was fun. Or if I did that, I'd just fall on my ass. <laughs> just saying. <laughs> All right. So it's uh, it's 6.05 p.m. now. Still Thursday, May 4th, 2023. And uh, trying to keep myself amused over the next... Uh, over the next... Uh, Oh shit. <laughs> I just forgot what time it is and I just forgot what time. Okay, I gotta be at the bus stop. I think the bus is at 24 after, so I definitely wanna be there by 20 after. It is 6.06 .06 p.m. I can still look at Obama phone three and see what time it is, so. So, uh, so yeah, I can kill a little bit of time here. It's such an ugly structure right there in that parking garage, which is absolutely nothing but a parking garage. It takes up an entire square block here in downtown Phoenix. Uh, square block between 1st Street and 2nd Street, between Monroe and Van Buren. Uh, I shot a video, it's probably probably over a year ago, one of my uh, one of my vlogs where I talked about how, how the, it's one of the problems with downtown Phoenix and why it's not as pedestrianized as it could be, uh, because it's got entire blocks with just nothing... I don't want to say nothing on it. I mean, the parking garage is something, but no, no destinations for somebody on foot on it. And, and yeah, like this block of Monroe here between first and second, it's a pretty solid example of that. I mean, granted, you get the higher Regency there, and that's certainly a notable destination. It's got a restaurant up above, which I believe rotates. It's way out of my budget. I've never been up there. Um, but yeah, really, really nice hotel that I will probably never ever stay in. Um, but yeah, on this side of the on this side of the street, you got a parking garage. Absolutely nothing. Just simply parking garage. Here's an entrance to it here. And then the entire rest of the block, nothing. And yeah, you've got the uh, the freight docks, the higher agency there, and then the entire rest of that block. Nothing. I don't even think there's a another entrance to the Hyatt Regency. Looks like there's a, a fire exit right there. But yeah, here's a whole block of downtown Phoenix with just literally nothing. And surprise, surprise. Uh, hardly any pedestrians. Oh, it looks like it looks like I stand corrected. There does appear to be an entrance right here to the Hyatt Regency. And somebody trying to make a U-turn because they are lost. Oh, gosh. So I was going to try to talk about just some some things that have changed. Uh, and then I just kind of got distracted by my uh, wandering around and noting. Yeah, that is an interest to Hyatt Regency. Well, that's good to know. I was half excited. I walked up the door because I was half expecting that to be like exit only. But uh, no, there's, there, is an, there is an instance here. I do stand corrected. There is something that somebody would access on foot. And of course, cameras, we're all being watched. Um, very nice. Although the, uh, the backpack does leave one to wonder, is she homeless? Is she an ASU student that stays at the downtown campus? I, uh, sometimes it's hard to tell. I just find myself wondering. I love these covers here. 
how it, how it says water, and it's just got like these embossed images of old school pipes. That's decorative. I dig stuff like that. Little things that people walk over without noticing. I don't know. It's just you know, it's all kinds of random stuff. So, uh, lime scooters everywhere. Uh, I took my 100th ride on a lime scooter today, riding from uh, half a block from my apartment down to the 44th Street and uh, 44th Street and Washington Light Rail Station. Um, this is going to actually be a first. Uh, I'm, I'm actually going to run out of minutes before my three-day period on, uh, on my ride pass runs out. Um, I've got three minutes left and about 22 hours left on my ride pass. So, yeah, I, I highly suspect I will do more than three minutes of riding in the next, uh, next, um, next 23 hours. At the very least, I'll be probably riding a scooter home from, uh, from 44th Street and, uh, Washington. It just seems like it used to always connect out just perfectly to where when I would get off the, get off the train, the northbound 44 would show up within five minutes, give or take. But now it seems like every time I get off that bus and I check to see how long the 44 is going to be, I'm looking at about 25 minutes. And sometimes it ends up being 30 minutes or more. And that is not a pleasant stop to sit at for that long of a period of time. Um, it, it, it has a very distinctive smell, which is a cross between, between piss and, uh, and fentanyl. Um, there's some like planners, decorative planners and benches and stuff directly behind the bus stop that homeless people like to camp at and it's just covered with trash. And in the morning, there's usually one or more people sitting there sparking up fentanyl as I'm waiting for the bus. So the stench is pretty overwhelming. Yeah, absolutely don't like waiting there. I mean, I do have the option of walking north to Van Buren Street and waiting there. But given the option of just hopping a scooter and being home in less than 10 minutes, yeah, it's the better option. I don't mind shelling out a couple of bucks for that. So I guess this morning I will probably, well, tomorrow morning, I'll probably probably get to find out what happens if you run out of minutes on a current Lime Pass uh, as you were riding one. Um, from what I recall reading about it, uh, or, you know, the, the, the fine, because I've read all the stuff, like, do I remember it all? <laughs> no, hell, it's, some, sometimes I don't even remember what I'm talking about as I'm talking about it. But uh, I love that this block is still a taxi stand. When I first became a cab driver for uh, Yellow Cab, and we had all radio dispatching, they used to, used to refer to this as the Valley Bank, short for the Valley National Bank. This used to be the Valley National Bank Tower before it was the Chase Tower, uh, for Chase bought out Valley National Bank. And the dispatchers would always just call this out as Cab at the Valley Bank. And as much as like real taxis have disappeared, I find it interesting that this block right here along First Avenue, southbound in front of the uh, tower formerly known as the Valley Bank Tower, Valley National Bank Tower, is still a sign that says taxi zone and it is still a taxi zone. Yeah, I forgot what I was talking about just like that. And I was mentioning something that I forgot and now I forget what it was. Oh, I better not forget. I got to be at the bus at 20 after. What time is it? 6.13. Okay, I'm just keep walking around this, this massive empty office tower, which just happens to be the tallest building in Arizona. Such a, such a sad waste to see something that, that huge vacant. And it seems so crazy to me that a building that massive can be sitting vacant and yet they're still building so much around it. Like, like can, can we maybe occupy the buildings we already have first? I don't know. Still a little, still a little miffed about Central Station being destroyed. Uh, I'm optimistic that the new Central Station will be, will be nice. But I, I got a feeling it's just going to be nice for uh, for the, the the wealthy 
office workers that are inside it and those kind of businesses and, and, and restaurants that they can't afford to eat at, but the, the amenities for actual transit users are gonna probably suck. But I hope I'm wrong about that. I really do. Um, speaking of amenities sucking for transit users, so check this out. Right here is where the bus stop should be. Here you see the pole where it was. Here you see a sign that says bus stop move. This is where the bus stop should be for the eastbound Route 3, which of course no longer stops at Central Station because Central Station is a giant construction zone. So it used to be if you got off light rail, you just walked into Central Station and you caught your Route 3 to go eastbound. Well now, it's gone from just simply having to walk over to there to God knows how much farther you have to walk because heaven forbid, with traffic reduced to one lane, motorists have to stop and wait for a bus loading and unloading. Because the city of Phoenix Planning Department doesn't give a fuck about people who ride the bus. You're, you're an afterthought if you're a transit user in this city. Huh, anyway, gotta keep my eye on my time. If I miss this bus, I'm looking at being super late for work. I'm scheduled for 60 hours. We got five more minutes here. I'm scheduled for 60 hours of work this week. Um, so this week there was no MET at Amazon. Um, and they're trying to say that they stopped it to give people a break. They stopped the MET and didn't have it this week to give people a break and, and, and because we're not as behind on work, but what I've been hearing is that they canceled MET this week because uh, they had had hit the maximum that under Arizona labor laws uh, that they can they can make people work over 40 hours a week. But there's a there's a maximum number of weeks that they can impose that on on people and they hit it. I don't know if there's truth to that or not. That's what I've been hearing. Seems like last year during uh, during um, peak that we had more than that many weeks consecutive of MET, but I'm not sure. But then again, I've also heard that um, Frito-Lay makes their people work and also uh, um, Federal Express makes makes their employees work well over 40 hours a week all the time so so I really don't know anyway this week there was no MET it was a bonus for me because uh, generally speaking I've been wanting to work 60 hours a week and with the MET being where where it is they haven't been offering as many VET which is voluntary extra time shifts so I've just been stuck with the, with the 50 I've been scheduled, and it's been a struggle to try to get a, any additional shifts. Um, whereas this week, I was able to pick up uh, a VET shift. I'm not going for an MET shift. Uh, it's Thursday, by the way. I'm not going to an MET, uh, uh, an MET shift right now. I'm heading to one that I picked up as a VET. And I also picked up one for Saturday night. So, so yeah, I'm scheduled for 60 hours. Um, I've had days that I've clocked in a little early. I've had days that I've clocked out a little late, particularly a couple days ago. I was in the process of finishing a truck, and it took took a little extra, and, and I probably didn't clock out until probably, probably like 47, 48 after, as opposed to 5.30. So... Um, so yeah, I do need to, <laughs> I do need to, it's actually to my benefit to show up a little bit late. I just, I just hate it when I show up late and I get assigned to do something other than drive a forklift. At this point, my love is driving a forklift, especially doing totes if I can. Speaking of which, yesterday I did totes for the first half of the shift. Had a weird issue with safety. I don't really want to talk about that right now. Um, I mean, I didn't get in trouble. I did get chewed out. It was awkward. I feel I was in the right. I kind of want to escalate it to ops um, since my manager instantly just chimed in besides safety with what she said, which seemed inappropriate. Um, but I said I didn't want to talk about that. Still talking about it. Um, yeah. Um, second half of the shift uh, was a total throwback. I spent the entire time... Uh, 
stacking wood pallets and gathering up wood pallets and loading wood pallets. I'm a little disappointed I didn't finish the full truck. I got a feeling that uh, Cody is also pretty disappointed that I didn't finish the whole truck. I, I think, now he didn't tell me this, but I kind of think he would have been happier if I had just sloppily loaded everything in the truck and been done with it, as opposed to being as meticulous as I am about the way that I stack pallets neatly. But... There's a Route 8 northbound. That's interesting. Now, I wonder if that's a temporary rerouting. Because I noticed that it's... I've been noticing the 0 coming around that corner from Monroe to go north. And now I'm seeing an 8 coming around that corner to go north. And I think the regular route for that is to take Van Buren and then turn left from Van Buren on to Central. So I wonder if they're routing it down to... Down to Monroe is a temporary thing because of the construction on Van Buren. It's the first time I've noticed an 8 doing that, but I have been noticing the 0 doing that for a while. Anyway, as I was saying, yeah, I, I he didn't say that, but I get the feeling he would have been happier if I had just sloppily loaded everything in the truck. But I don't know. I just can't bring myself to do wood pallets that way. When I get in the zone loading wood pallets, I'm in the zone loading wood pallets, and I'm stacking them neatly and just kind of... In fact, I think one of the other AMs... Uh, I'm forgetting his name. Um, back half guy usually works on the south side. Um, the redhead, whose name I always freak and forget. Of all the leadership in that department, I think the one who's been there the longest. Um, at one point, he came by and he kind of he was kind of being snarky about how much work I was putting into the stacking, and he goes, "Oh, you're building a fort." <laughs> and, I'm like, and I just smiled and said, "Yeah, more or less. <laughs> Whatever." Unless they straight up tell me I can't do it, I'm just going to do it that way. It makes me happy. And, uh, I mean, it's a physical workout, but I just really enjoy doing it. Now, I wouldn't want to go back to doing that every day, but it's a fun diversion when it happens, especially when it happens in Zone 339. Um, um, and really getting into my music, as I said, that little... I don't know if I finished in my last video talking about the speaker. So I was, I was saying that... Yeah, they have these little speakers that the learning ambassadors use. And I found one on the north side dock. An older model they don't use anymore. It's missing its microphone, but I noticed that it has a micro SD card slot on it. And so I, I picked up, a, for 12 bucks. I picked up 10 old uh, 2 gig micro SD cards. I had to get 2 gig ones because it doesn't support SDHC. And I feel like I've already said this before. But anyway, been loving the music on it. I got two cards. Every couple days, I try to sit down at my computer and add some more stuff to the playlist. And today, I just dumped every single uh, every single Gordon Lightfoot song I have onto it, onto one of my cards. Um, and yeah, for those of you who didn't, who haven't heard, um, Canadian singer songwriter, uh, recording artist, and uh, legend Gordon Lightfoot passed away yesterday. I don't really know any of the details of it. And I know he was certainly getting to be quite elderly. But Gordon Lightfoot's been, been a favorite artist of mine for a long, long time. And um, in fact, just this this year, um, I've, I've been listening to his album Sundown, which I have on vinyl, a lot. It's just been one of my most played albums over the last year in my turntable, on my turntable in my bedroom. And uh, it's probably actually sitting in the space behind, there's kind of a space behind my turntable where I will lean records back against the wall that I've been playing a lot just so I can randomly grab them, so I can grab them and play them immediately again without having to look them up. And I would be willing to bet money that's where my Sundown LP is missing. So, uh, yeah, rest in peace. Rest in peace, Gordon Lightfoot. Your, your music will definitely live on forever. And uh, kind of wanted, kind of wanting to record a look, Gordon Lightfoot uh, tribute for my channel. Not sure which one of his songs I'll sing. Probably not The Wreck of the Ed Edmund Fitzgerald. Great song. Entirely too long. But uh, oh, this morning I got home and was just reflecting on... on or in Lightfoot and uh, watch the tribute video that Rick, uh, Rick Beato did uh, on his channel about it, which was very, very good, very heartfelt. And um, got home and busted out my karaoke and sang uh, 
um, if you could read my mind, just to myself, in my room, in my living room, by myself, saying, uh, if you could read my mind, and also rainy day people. And, uh, I don't know, might record both of those, try to upload them to my channel, so hopefully that happens. Anyway, I need to, I need to wrap this up. My bus is showing up soon. Uh... The only other thing I wanted to say, and I keep I keep not getting to it, is uh, Waymo has expanded their coverage area, and it now includes uh, where my apartment is. It also includes most of Central Tempe and Old Town Scottsdale. So they haven't expanded it all to the north or to the west. So I'm still limited with not being able to cross 27th Avenue. I'm still limited with not being able to cross Camelback. Uh, to the north or to the west, but I can now go into Old Town Scottsdale and go into Central Tempe. But most importantly, I can order a Waymo from home and have it pick me up right on my street instead of having to walk a half mile over to 44th Street and then deal with the complications of them driving in circles and not being able to figure out how to how to get into uh, get into the QT or the app being very vague as to where it wants me to wait for the, uh, wait for the car. Anyway, I really got to wrap this up. My bus is going to be here any minute. I got to get my $2.25 ready. Thanks for coming with me on this extended walk around uh, around downtown Phoenix and uh, listening to me talk to myself. <laughs> I hope you all find it amusing.